Welcome back, part two, uh, still with Ron Reid, ex-Sheffield United Academy manager and with the head of recruitment at uh, Bramall Lane, very much a key man in Chris Wilder's management team, Paul Mitchell. Key man for me on this show is uh, James Gray because he's going to round up everything else that's going on. But we were kind of uh, piecing together the threads of recruitment, the way the academy works. And with Paul, the two things I was going to come uh, to you on were not knowing which division you're in and having to assess quite a, you could be signing for the premier league or again for the championship so how does that work for you then actually not actually it sounds boring it's going to be a boring answer really but nothing really changes because you have to be prepared for every eventuality anyway and i think last season you know we were we were we were well in the playoff places for a long long time uh, so pretty much a, an extension of of last year you know the the the, the uh, uh, and it's just a the building up of that data on players and stuff like that. And other people uh, that were on that list or on that you know on your computer at this time last year who are still on there now. Yeah, definitely without doubt. You know, yeah. what I mean, I mean we, you know, I would have thought whether we go to Premier League or not, we'll be we're in a certain market. You know what I mean? And uh, it will be. Will, will, does that player want to come to us? Can we can we financially afford him? Does he see it as a good? A good vehicle for himself uh, coming to Sheffield United, which I think is a real attractive club to, to come to come to now. Uh, but as I say, it's, it is it is exactly the same as last season and maybe the season before because you've got to be aware at any given time every eventuality could happen, uh, and you've got to know where to to sort of go shopping. Unknown factor though is not knowing perhaps what the club are going to have to spend. I don't want to involve you in any politics, but that. You know, bearing that in mind, are you having to look at, oh, if we can afford this, I'm looking there. If we can afford that, I'm looking down there. Well, how does no, that like work? I say, re really cross section. You know, we're not uh, we're not looking at Lewandowski any time soon. <laughs> we're all like that. <laughs> no. uh, you know, Rashford are all like that. Or Hazard, easy. <laughs> looks like he's on his way. We're not looking at any of them anytime soon. <laughs> but like, we've got a fair idea where, where you know where we, we you know what we what we think could be available. And what we think we could get, as I said, just and that and that's just been a, a long process of uh, uh, um, gathering data on people and speaking to people, mm. you know, speaking to agents and clubs and stuff like that. If it was the Premier League, w would you still be looking lower leagues if if, if you thought the player was we if, if, potentially if, good if, enough? Like I said, you know, Chris is really hands on. So I think if you look at where the success has come. Before in his in his previous signings, we pretty much go down that route. You know, you know, uh, um, somebody who fits, who can come in, who can mix with a group, because that's really, really, really important that they mix with a group. I mean, Ron touched on it earlier, you know, and I don't like to say that some somebody's got it wrong or some's got it right. In my view, there's, there's no sort of right template or wrong. It's mm. what works for you. But if you look at Fulham, you know, they've sort of gone up. They spent 100 million. Uh, they basically ripped the the soul out of the side. The team that went up. And, and I was at the playoff final, and I was in the, the lounge after, and you, you could see the togetherness that was in the in the Fulham squad, in the Fulham team. And and when you do go for division, obviously every division's better than when you're getting promotion to one you was in, so it's more difficult. And you can hit on some bad times. You can have some, you know, results where you don't quite go for you. And it's, it, I, I always put it, it's like family. Like if your family, when you're having a tough time, you want your family and your your loved ones around you. They're going to support you and help you. And I think that's him in a, in a in a football team. So I think what Fulham's it, and this is only perception because yeah. uh, you know I don't I'm not in there. I don't know really what went off. But he, he maybe had he just stuck with the the core group, mm. the players that they had, and and kept people. You know, gone and signed Ollie Norwood, who we signed, and kept. The uh, Pearson from Chelsea, the people who they had, you know, kept Fredericks, maybe not binned Kevin McDonald and uh, uh, Kearney as early as they did, mm. and Tim Ream. Yeah. And, and they might have had more together in them bad, mo bad, that, bad moments to stick correct, together. Exactly, you know? yeah. That's so, that got to be careful. The coaching team as well with yeah. Stuart Gray, mm, who was very right. successful. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And they went for Scott uh, Parker, brought him in in, in place yeah, of Stuart yeah. Gray, yeah. which, you know, one or two of us found quite strange. Who's now manager? Yeah. Yes, he's now manager. Yeah. So, yeah. so I think you got to be, you got to be mindful of that. That they come into the group, you know, and then they're not going to, like John Ron said earlier, that they disrupt the group and the togetherness and the team spirit because it's it's it's, it's, it's amazing how far that takes you. How mindful as well have you got to be about not wrecking the club for the sake of one season or trying desperately to stay in the Premier League? I mean, Huddersfield have gone down, but I'm assuming they're in good 
financial health because they haven't spent mm. lavishly to maybe come back again. Is mm. that an important mm. factor for you? I, I, th I think not? it is. I mean, too many changes is probably worse than not enough changes, if you like. You know, Huddersfield have shown that. Uh, they have gone down, but they've gone down. I think a lot of the fans are really pleased with, the, obviously, not the results that they've had, but mm. pleased with the way they've gone about things. I think the chairman there... Uh, whose name I forget at the moment. Dean but he, yeah, Dean Hall. Yeah, yeah. That's him, yeah. He, uh, I think he's done a fantastic job of guiding a football club. He's not overspent, he's not, uh, he, he's not gone silly. And I think, well, I'll just watch this space because I think Huddersfield will be in a strong position next mm. season. To come back. Yeah. Well, to come back, yeah. A bit like climbing Everest. You have to go up once and come yeah. down in stages to go back up again. Hopefully stay. Well, um, the money, I don't know anything about climbing Everest. The, money, the money's so, <laughs> so important now, isn't yeah, it? The yeah. parachute yeah. money that they get now. Uh, you know, it, it stands you in good stead. You've got, it? You got, mm. to, you got to get... You, you, if, you're in, if you're in League One, League Two, Champ or Prem for me, you've got to try and get value for money. Yeah, you've got to yeah. try and get value for yeah. money and not not i think there's a lot of clubs where you look at the prem and uh, you speak to people and even things they do behind the scenes that's not really you know on the football field they do things because they can because they can because they've got the money to do it and you think well is that the right thing to do you know in certain instances and i think you've got to spend you've got to spend wisely and uh, or try and i know for a fact that chris sort of like we all do try and treat the money as it's your own because it's all right when you're spending someone else's someone else's money, mm. so um, got to be very careful. Like I said, that you don't you don't go and overspend. And 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 I mean the guy at Fulham is he's minted, isn't he? So mm -hmm. so I suppose that you know hundred grand hundred yeah. million to him is not is pretty much no. pretty much short change. Whereas uh, obviously at Sheffield United, uh, a lot of clubs you know a lot of clubs out of the top six can't really go. Four million, four million the record signing in fact just below i think for john uh, john, john egan, egan yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. who's been great value for, i think everybody yeah. agree I, I, I think he has Incredible. i think he's been yeah, absolutely really yeah. value for yeah. money how john. much is he actually worth now do you think <sighs> he's worth a lot more than if, than the four million anyway yeah. let's put yeah. it that way Twice but, uh, and a half, yeah Hopefully, I will like still be say, staying. Really, because uh, if I say what we think it's worth, and we, go, right. and we go for another, for and we whatever. go for another player, they'll say like, "Well, you said you're John Eagle worth." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. We yeah. can say it, though, can't we? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I reckon about ten million. No? <laughs> he's worth the way, the, way the, the, the job he's done. I mean, of all these, there's a huge long list. Don't want to leave anybody out. But Jack O'Connell, Connell, Ender Stevens, George Bulldog, John Egan, a foremost, John Fleck, Mark Duffy, Oliver Norwood. We, I, which of these gives you the most satisfaction? Would you would you say? Well, uh, I, I would. I would. I think, like I say, it's a collective effort. You know what I mean? Sort of like like Chris. Like I keep saying, he's heavily involved. Nil is involved. You know, they know players. They know. You know, Al's had Ollie at, uh, at Scunny. He had him on loan when he was at when he was at Man United. So it's a collective thing where you know a lot about the players. I'd say all of them. All, we like we we. I'm certainly that sort. I like everybody to do well. I really do. I don't. You know. And um, and I think you know they've shown that you can actually come from League One, be based more or less as a League One player, and do well going Championship. And then hopefully if they can they can kick on again. Well, a lot of these lads can kick on again. There's, there's definitely there's definitely a lot more to come from a lot of them. So all all of them really, all of them's done really well. Really pleased. Dean all Henderson. Yeah, we like pleased with. I know Ward is, you know, is, um, uh, really pleased with Endo as well. Like you know, so. Everybody who does well, you're pleased for, aren't you? Really, Stratton's Stra Stra really good lads as well. You know, when you come across them, sort of maybe not in the football setting, and you sort of bump into them. You know, speak, me speaking personally, having not really met them or, or whatever before, they're all just really normal, good, down to earth lads, yeah, aren't they? Are. You, know, mm -hmm. you see some yeah. footballers around Sheffield or around town, wherever it yeah. may be, and they give off an air of I'm a footballer, and they kind of have a strange demeanour about them. The Blades lads, I mean this genuinely, they all seem really, really good lads. They are, and it's amazing how many players we've had in, in at the club, loan, loan players, etc. and what have you, and they've gone and said to their agents, change room's absolutely fantastic, it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's one of the best I've been in, there's no sort of superstars, nobody thinks they're better than anybody else, and they just get on with stuff, you know, so, that, and, and you know, that's a massive, that's a massive compliment again to, to management, how they've, like, you know, kept it on a level like that. Just before we go to James for the roundup, which will include Worksop Town, and we'll yeah. broaden that out to, to, to you two guys, uh, John, Sher you, John Sheridan at Chesterfield. You know, yeah. I had a, 
Uh, I've had quite a few uh, tweets so welcoming you two today, one or two of which I shan't mention by a previous <laughs> arrangement. We won't even say what those were. <laughs> and, and, and one or uh, two that we can. Um, uh, it, one was saying, can we get you back at Chesterfield? All right, knowing I'm a spy right, and of course you have great association there, you uncovered a lot of players for Chesterfield, then left, came to... Mm. Uh, and, but thankfully, on the turn now with John Sheridan, what do you make of that? Yeah, it's, it's amazing how it's gone, gone full circle. Yeah. And uh, uh, since I was there, uh, obviously started there with John, uh, and now John's back in charge, and uh, I think he's done done terrific since he since he went into the club. But he, you know, he, he knows the chairman well. Even when he left the club, to be fair, he, you know, he still got on. He still got on with Dave, so he knows how it works, and he knows he knows what he's looking for. He's took Glenn in with him. Glyn Snoddy, who's a real good lad as well, as we were saying earlier. Um, and I think they can only go, you know, go from strength to strength. Ron, promotion next season, Chesterfield. Your former team as well. Yeah, yeah. Your well, first club, really. Yeah, Yeah, my first club, yeah. yeah. You, you, you'd like to think that they'd be pushing. I think, you know, once they've got used to the league, uh, when you come out of the Football League, obviously it is, it is different. And... Uh, uh, sometimes difficult to find your feet, as Chesterfield have shown in the in the early stages of the season. But there's no reason why, with with good recruitment, which we're talking about tonight, with good recruitment, I'm sure they could uh, could be one of the front runners next season. Let's hope yeah. so, right? Indeed. Okay, what's going on? Well, loads as usual. Yeah, absolutely, loads as usual. Try and keep it nice and tight so we can get back to talking to these two fellas. Blades have got a big away day. Um, against Preston on Saturday after that defeat last week, which I'm sure will be well out of all the players and fans' minds as they aim to overtake Leeds to get back into that uh, last uh, automatic promotion spot. And Steve Bruce, big weekend for him because he welcomes his former side in Aston Villa to Hillsborough this weekend. You know all about that, Alan, of course, don't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. I wrote a, wrote a column uh, today about his treatment at uh, Aston Villa. I had a bit of a response. Mm, yes. <laughs> that. A yeah. prickly response, wasn't I, it? Well, I think it's only it's only about half of Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> I know how you feel. Uh, the, rest of, the other half of Birmingham is doing all right. I'm quite happy with that. Okay, that's all right. You blue yeah. nose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to that game though on Saturday. It's, my, it's the game I'm going to as well. Is it? Oh, be careful, won't? You? Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes I think it's fated that uh, the good guy has the last laugh, yeah. and uh, you know. Uh, you know, I can accept that Aston Villa fans were frustrated. Mm. We're talking about six weeks into the season. And, mm. you know, over two years, I don't know these two guys, over two years, apart from those six weeks, he'd done very well for them. Mm. So it's the nature of football. Um, mm. you, know, you know Steve yeah. Bruce, don't you? Yeah, he, yeah. I, I think even even the last game, uh, I think it was not Forest. It was fantastic. It was an absolute cracking game. It, it was 2-0 uh, down, 2-2, two, 3-2. Two, and, and I think Whelan missed a penalty. Yes. And you think, well, if he'd have scored that penalty, then would Steve Rule still have been there? Or he possibly mm. could have. And then it can hinge on stuff like that when he's. Yeah. Because there is a lot of pressure, obviously, a lot of pressure. Aston Villa, you know, they want to get promoted and they're a big club, the Premier League club. But it is, isn't it, Ronnie? No, so, I mean, you don't, it, 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 you don't get very, yeah. very much of a good nowadays, you know what I mean? No, no. And it's just the fickle nature of football. And. Uh, but I just, I mean, the point I was trying to make, which has been completely missed by a lot of the people coming back, it's not the criticism of him, it's the way that people criticise these days, mm. a disrespectful, disparaging, yeah. abusive, yeah. insulting way mm. that a fellow with four promotions yeah. who like played said, for Manchester yeah. United and won the title is treated. You know, that, yeah. that's the point, isn't it? But um, these are the people, Alan, who have probably never kicked a ball since they left school, you know, yeah. but, but yet they still know how to coach, how to set yes. the team up, you know, how to play. He should have done this, he should have done that. You, you hear it all the time, don't you? you do. But unfortunately, that's the way of the world at the moment. It that's, certainly that's is. the well, world yeah. we live in. It's a big one for them at the weekend. A huge one. Of course it is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, so that's at Hillsborough, Saturday, 3pm. Another belting win as well for Sheffield United ladies team. Uh, it's Tottenham and uh, Leicester, back-to-back -back wins away from home in the last couple of weeks. Durham are the op opposition next Sunday in non-league. So it works up. We've been talking about them and their sort of ding-dong battle that they've got going on with Peniston Church in recent weeks in Northern Counties East League Premier Division. They're flying. Um, they've Well, Peniston hot on their heels as well, as we've already mentioned. Harrogate are the opponents for the Tigers this weekend. Um, in the division below, Alan, you were at Sandygate the other night, weren't you, watching Kieran Watson score a hat-trick? Yeah, what a player he is. Mm. He's a really, really good finisher. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure Mitch has got his 
eyes on sort of all, all levels, but this guy's got well into the 20 goals yeah, a season. Yeah. It was a difficult game, actually. 3-1 against the bottom team. Yeah. FC bowls over. over, but it wasn't a walkover, and they needed those goals. And I'd seen a 3-3 draw at Hallam the previous week uh, against, um, oh, crikey, was it Woosborough? Woosborough yeah. Bridge. And that was a good game as well. Uh, but they're in second place and uh, going second for automatic place. promotion. Yeah, two games in second hand, game. five points behind. Um, yeah. East Yorkshire, Carnegie are the opponents this weekend. Sheffield Tigers in Rugby Union, they're at home to Peterborough National 2 North. And our Rugby League side as well, been waxing lyrical about them in recent weeks. They're third in their division. Big game for them this weekend. Game in hand, but they're actually playing top of the table. Toronto Wolfpack, who are managed by triple winning Leeds Rhinos former head coach, Brian McDermott. So that's going to be a belting game this weekend weekend in uh, Rugby League's Championship. Uh, the Steelers, Elite League playoffs, they managed to scrape in, did the Sheffield Steelers, they've got their bogey team, the Cardiff Devils, at the arena this Saturday. Um, they did beat them their last time out, so it could be a good result and a good draw for the Steelers in the playoffs. Uh, Masters Golf next week as well, mark your card with that one. Two Sheffield golfers taking part, wonderful to see. Matt Fitzpatrick, who had a tied seventh finish there a couple of years ago. Danny Willett, of course, 2016 champion at Augusta, both in action next week. And also, I'm rather excited about the county cricket season starting tomorrow, Alan, as well. Yeah, um, typical weather. Yeah, exactly. Just it doesn't, the, just doesn't seem right, does get. it? But Yorkshire, um, if you are interested, Four days um, of play, hopefully, fingers crossed, weather permitting, begins tomorrow at Trent Bridge against Nottinghamshire. Joe Root, Gary Ballins featuring for Yorkshire, Stuart Broad and the likes featuring for Not. So, big Fantastic. game. I hope the weather warms up a bit mm. and the rain stops and they can play. It should start. It should play in February, really. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you could have played in February. <laughs> and you, uh, neither of us are going to be here next week, so it'll be a repeat here next week. There is a great show lined up for a fortnight. You're going to be abroad. Yeah. Um, I am. I'm Somewhere. Gonna, yeah, I'm going to be at the Masters. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. It's a tough life. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to get my breath, to be honest. Cause, I mean, I can rub it, but how does he remember all that? <laughs> I don't know. You've you not even reading off an autocure or all no, that. No, what no, can no. I think of? How do you remember all that? <laughs> <laughs> don't stop it. It's a little trick. There's no autocue, no. It's, uh, it, it, it was having a little, a little, little glance at, his, at my phone. Look at his iPhone now yeah. again. I won't be here either. It was going to be a job for either of us. Originally, you with your cricket connections. Um, I'm host. Have great pleasure and privilege of hosting the Sheffield Cricket Lovers Society annual dinner uh, mm. next week. Uh, two great speakers there: uh, Farouk Engineer uh, and also Jim Coombs. Uh, they'll be both before your time. But I you two remember. will. I can remember, remember those those two. Farouk Engineer. Yes. The Lankyshire, wasn't it? Yeah. Swashbuckling, wicketkeeper, yeah. batsman. Right, yeah. Jim Coombs was a goalkeeper. Goal and, uh, yeah, cricketer, a cricketer yeah. as well. Yeah. Long yeah. gone are the, the days. Era. I can't get my head around yeah. that. I can't get my head around that. I played both sports. Yeah. Unbelievable. Well, routinely, Chad Hemsley did. He's yeah. been in there talking yeah, about Chad, it. Yeah. Works up town. Now then. Yeah, brilliant. What a story. 15 successive victories. Wow. Craig Denton, the manager, deserves fantastic credit. He does, He yeah. was in here a few weeks ago. Uh, Lance Hardy, who, a great supporter in the media, a TV producer, briefs me all the yeah, time. Lance, yeah. Tells me yeah. that you're kind of, you're involved, aren't you, on the periphery of what they're doing. Very much on manager. the periphery. I'm, uh, yeah, <laughs> well behind the scenes, well down the uh, pecking order. Yeah, it's... Uh, I, I, I just got a message from Paul Williams, who who is the, uh, I think he is the owner, he's the, the financier of the club, uh, and he just asked me if I'd go along and, you know, just see what I thought and give him a bit of advice. I've got to be honest, when I first went early on in the season, uh, it wasn't the best. Uh, they were struggling a little bit, particularly with the home games. They, they hadn't won at home uh, in two or three games and uh, yeah. things weren't weren't looking very rosy but I think it all changed uh, at Penniston Church uh, away when they won 1-0 it was uh, it was a tight game uh, Penniston were on top uh, but, but the, the Tigers defended really really well uh, and managed to get a break in the very last minute of the game. They got a penalty and, uh, and won 1-0. Big win. And I don't think they've looked back since then. No, they did the no. double over Peniston as well. They had a yeah. huge win over uh, quite a high-ranking team. Yorkshire Amateurs. Yeah. 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 I saw that game. Yeah, yeah, that was the last game I saw. That. Was it? Uh, and seven, a, seven nil or something, was it? yeah. And a crowd of 1,600-odd. Uh, 
biggest for years and years mm. of, of one of their games. Mm. I mean, you both won promotion there. You in the 70s, I think. And as a player. Yeah. As I, a player. I didn't bring it as a manager or anything. And you in the 90s. No good on years to be to <laughs> yeah. myself. But yeah, yeah, we did, yeah. A great, smashing, smashing club. Uh, you know, some great people working around the club. Uh, um, incredible amount of volunteer work that went into a real real family club at that time when yeah. I was there you know we my daughter were only young then she grew up grew up really around the people at the place really enjoyed it and 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 they, they will come out and support you know I mean the, the people who's involved now Keith Islet, Dickie Bromley, Chris Smith you know it's their it's, mm. it's, it's, it's their Wednesday in United you know it's their yeah. Man United even it's it's, yeah. it's yeah. the passion for the club's incredible so Really, really pleased, and and to win 15. I don't care whether you're in the you know Premier League or Sunday League. To yeah. win 15 on bounce takes some doing. And yeah. the potential of the place. I think I looked up the population recently, 54,000 or thereabouts, which is sort of one of the higher centres of population without a football league club. Mm. And you always think, you know, could they do that sometime, Ron? Mm. Could they get there? It's well, a long way off at the moment. That's a I mean, there's several divisions off at the moment. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, I, I, I think, uh, I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm tempting fear when I say I think they're going to win the league and get promoted this year. Uh, but then obviously they're moving to the Northern Premier League, league uh, and there are, there are two divisions in that. Yeah. And then there's the uh, Conference North, well, yeah. National League North now, isn't it? Yeah, National right, League okay. North and then the National League. Uh, so that you know, there's a, a fair few years yet before yeah. that could happen. But uh, you can dream, can't you? Especially some of the money as well, and some of the yeah. attendances you see. Mm. You know, you, you look at some of the these teams. We were talking about this the other week, weren't we? we were Glynn in actually. Yeah. We were talking about. You know, he was obviously saying. I said, "Oh, that was a good result." So and so. And he was like, "I don't even know the teams where we're playing because you've got these teams that aren't synonymous with being yeah. that, oh, at that yeah. level. Bromley yeah. and yeah. Boreham yeah. Wood and these yeah. kind of sides, yeah. Yeah. and they're sort of pushing themselves up. There's so much money in that sort yeah. of side of the game now, particularly in the south as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the southern clubs. I think it works. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's always surprised me that Sheffield and surrounding areas never had a conference team. Yeah, mm, yeah. Sure. really, they've never had a conference no. team. You know, it's like, like you know, because a lot of Lot close surrounding areas, and I think works up definitely. But certainly, I think Ronald said when he were playing there and what have you, games he's going to watch him when I was managing there. Uh, could could carry a conference team, mm. they could carry a conference team, you know. Uh, yeah. just um, finally, kids, um, can you tell a player you look it's not just his ability but his temperament? I'm thinking, say, somebody like David Brooks, can mm. you sort of tell at an early age he's going to go somewhere? Well, he, but I, I, I can only speak for Brooks. He, he got a lot of talent straight away. We, he, you know, he, he, you know, Chris and Millie like straight. So I think the first couple of training sessions that he says he got a lot of talent. This kid only only quite slight. I think Manchester City didn't really make a, a wrong decision with him. I think he was slight, slight, very slight at the time. They knew that he was he was he was a talented lad, but they got people ahead of him. So he come to us and, like I said, talent were recognised early on. But he'd also, like I say, he got a mental strength about him where he's, he's a sort of quiet lad, but he had that inner, inner desire to be, you mm. know, to, to, to improve to and listen to people, you know, and, 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 and obviously the manager, he trained for a year with the first team and the manager really, you know, coached him yeah. through that year. And I'm sure Brooks he would admit that you know that pushed him on to to, and he's to, doing, to, to, to where he's at. And he's where doing he's at now. great in the, in the Premier League with Bournemouth. Mm. Thanks ever so much. It's no been problems. a fantastic, Enjoyed fascinating it. hour again, Mitch. Thanks very yeah. much, and Ron okay. and James. Uh, as I say, we're sitting out next week. I've got a busy week in every other respect, including good luck to all fellow runners of the Sheffield Half Marathon in the city a week uh, on Sunday. See you next week. Bye bye.